for me as wanting to get a handle on the brain and, and seeing relationships between brain changes and these experiences there's a great opportunity for a kind of demystification process uh, which I actually think is really healthy um, because those big experiences could be used as a sort of escapism you know uh, this this world is only so interesting I can go to this other one and that's really special and maybe it makes me special and the knowledge you can have there special and I, I think there's something to be said for kind of grounding it all and figuring out where it comes from, why it happens, why it relates to the biology that's uh, evolved for us, the machinery that we have. Uh, and so, you know, that's a kind of fun game to, to play is um, uh, piecing together all of the pieces around that. I mean, psychedelics are, are um, poised to be hugely disruptive in a, in a very positive way uh, to mental health care. Um, really a system and approach that's been failing for so long um, with uh, rates of mental illness uh, going up all of the time and, and, and the magnitude of the burden caused by them being huge. Um, the cost of them, uh, the way that they're treated with prescription medications, you know, and how rates of prescribing antidepressants, for example, are going up all of the time. So, you know, major problem there, and, and it's quite natural to sort of assume from that that um, something's not working um, and uh, we need something radically different. Um, and psychedelics, I feel are, are, are that change really and they are a, a very different model and approach to uh, mental illness and mental health because they disobey as well that dichotomy between uh, pathology or illness and wellness. They seem to be beneficial for people who don't have a clear psychopathology or mental illness, you know, we're all on this spectrum and uh, maybe you know that spectrum is more continuous than discrete uh, and, and so you know there are sort of grades of wellness and, and illness anyway so psychedelics um, uh, seem to be able to treat a lot of things or to be beneficial for a lot of things and uh, unlike in conventional uh, psychiatry and psychiatric research where they would love to have uh, uh, particularly the industries, um, specific drugs for specific indications that they can then corner off, silo off, own, you know, make a lot of money from. Uh, psychedelics are, are, are much more democratic and um, uh, what we call transdiagnostically effective, so we think. And so that means they also don't obey the standard categorization of, of mental illnesses into oh, this one's bipolar one, you know, it's bipolar two, this is, uh, you know, uh, anorexia nervosa restrictive type or whatever, all these different chopping up of, of mental illnesses, which is quite useful on a level of, um, of, of diagnosis, um, but it, it's not really informed by the science or the biology, and, and um, uh, part of that, that game has probably been to to um, create a situation where people could have targeted treatments for targeted dis disorders. But uh, psychedelics are, are more like they kind of go for the bullseye, the space in a Venn diagram, if you want, you know, where the circles overlap, where all of these disorders overlap. You know, there's something common to all of them, and what's that? You know, and you break it right down you might first of all just say that there's suffering you know some kind of base suffering anxiety fear um, whatever its origin um, psychological pain uh, and trauma can go into that space um, but then it manifests in different ways it sort of crystallizes in different ways it could crystallize into an eating disorder but just as easily depression or maybe both often both and uh, so there's so much overlap and and the way that mental illness is often crystallized in is that certain ways of thinking and behavior become reinforced and get stamped in and so people have these biases in 
the way that they look at themselves, the way that they look at the world, the way that they're behaving, and they, those habits uh, become stamped in and reinforced. And psychedelics are the key here because they can come in and unlock that uh, sort of frozen um, um, system and dismantle it and um, uh, relax those habits um, and provide a window of what we call plasticity or ability to change uh, uh, in which uh, you know together with therapeutic support you can work on revising these pathological um, habits of mind and behavior.